Hello and welcome to join me as we travel through two small towns by the coast of Iceland's deepest fjord, Eyjafjörður. Usually I only cover one town in each episode, but in this case to compare those two towns tells a certain story in itself, like I discovered so well in the first edition of this video, but I am replacing my older town visits little by little and hopefully making them better. We start on the map over Eyjafjörður. Akureyri is the capital of Northern Iceland and today's subjects, the towns Áskógs, Sandur and Hönes are only 30 minutes north of Akureyri and it's only 5 minutes drive between those two towns. Both of them are a part of the municipality Dalvík that I covered in a recent video I'm linking to, but the number of small municipalities in Iceland has greatly decreased in the last two decades to cut costs, and we start with Áskógsandur, but the name means river, forest, sand. And the first thing that comes to mind when Icelanders think of Áskógsandur is the ferry harbor that serves the nearby island Hrísey. Some old people remember the times when mink whale hunting was uh, an industry around here. People would drive down to the harbor and buy a fresh cut as the boats were coming in, but that's history now. This is mainly a drive through town where Riese residents often store their cars or like the captain of the ferry told me himself, it's not a good idea to use the ferry to transport expensive cars too often between the island and the mainland because it's not designed for car transport except to a very small extent. But the harbor can get very lively during summers when the tourists are flocking to the island but apart from that, the town has been called uh, dull by some nasty people. But the reason is most likely because uh, it's true. Maybe because you can't even buy a hot dog there. But uh, that would however change. And uh, what is the fastest and simplest thing to bring a boring town to life? And that would be alcohol, of course. So, 16 years ago, a microbrewery opened up here but they are getting to be quite common here in Iceland. But uh, as can be expected, not all of them are doing uh, well. But in this case, I'm glad to say that they are doing very well. The local beer is called Kaldi, but Kaldur means uh, cold in Icelandic. So the name is something close to uh, Koldi in bad English. And I'm leaving a link to the history of the brewery because it's an interesting story of a local fisherman that got injured on his knee at sea. So he and his wife were looking at uh, difficult times because there was no other work in this little town where they had their roots. Everything was about the fish back in uh, 2006. So they got this uh, brewery idea and took off to Denmark to develop the concept or where they got the idea to make uh, Pilsner style beer made by the century old uh, Czech brewing method. So they took off again and uh, made a deal and bought all equipment with the best ingredients available from uh, the Czech Republic. And when that was mixed with the water from the mountain here called Solarfjall or Sun Mountain, the rest of the story is a story of success from day one. It was then in 2017 when this same factory opened up a beer spa where guests can have a bath in beer which is considered to be an extremely good skin treatment. And relaxation is also a part of the treatment and beer testing, of course. So this knee injury would change the history of this town. But the beer factory sells a large beer selection all over Iceland in competition with the big factories and create dozens of jobs in the area. And I can only say for myself that it's for sure the quality of the product that made that happen. So the town isn't as dull as it might look at first glance. And then we have this nature all around where every season has its charm. But as for me personally, spring in Iceland is the only time of year that I don't like when it comes to photography. It's the yellow season as I call it. But those drone shots are from late October, not the best conditions, but then, after I gave it a thought, I decided to go ahead and show Icelandic towns as they look to me at any given time. 
instead of going chasing uh, the tourist brochure pictures. Iceland as is, that is what my channel is about. And uh, this is northern Iceland, late October, as we take off and look south. Only a few kilometers away, we have the second town, Höganes. And uh, like with Áskosandur, those towns are not by the highway, meaning that it should be even more struggle to operate a hot dog stand in Höganes, since they don't even have the ferry traffic like they have in Áskosandur. And uh, here we have a clip from my older video around here, summer video. And as you noticed, I drove past the Höganes intersection by mistake. And then I did it again as I was visiting Höganes with my drone. So the town is uh, not all that well uh, marked from the highway. But to my surprise, during this uh, summer trip, and again uh, last summer, the town was uh, full of tourists. And uh, because I had uh, just arrived from Áskosandur, where all the streets were empty, I asked myself, what are they doing around here? And I think there is no one answer to this question, but I do think that I can see the main reason though. First of all, they have a good seaside camping place with uh, hot tubs on the beach that are very popular. And it is the local uh, saltfish manufacturer that operates them and a restaurant as well. And that is a very different company, I must say. They make the salt fish the old way, but even here in Iceland, it's getting harder and harder to get uh, the good old uh, salted cod the old way in stores. And the old way is simple. It's about uh, for how long time the fish is kept in the salt and dried after that. But uh, what you get in the stores nowadays is mostly quick salted fish that uh, just hasn't got the taste that only time will give to the fish. So... To make the real thing, it takes weeks. So during this uh, summer visit, I decided to uh, visit the factory and try to buy some uh, salt fish directly from them. And uh, I arrived uh, late Friday afternoon. The staff was already celebrating uh, the weekend with the snaps. So they gave me a drink and told me that they were low in stock. But uh, one guy there took me on this walk around through this uh, very clean uh, factory and finally found a pack of uh, the good old fish deep in the freezer and gave it to me. So I left the town with uh, more faith in humanity and wondering about the contrasts between those two towns, which uh, seem to be so far apart when it comes to tourism. Again, telling me that success in the tourist industry is and will always be up to the people and the local companies but not the public institutions, and the infrastructure doesn't have to be expensive. So this is what I like the most about Höganes. It's basing the tourism on old industry, which uh, is a rich part of Iceland's history, or the salt fish production. And just by the fish factory, we have the salt fish restaurant, and together with the hot tubs, it has formed a certain attraction that makes the town uh, full of life during summers. And as I mentioned, with whale hunting, they have evolved into whale watching in the last two decades. From Höganes, you can go whale watching and see angling, and you can actually do so from many towns by the fjord, because here is one of the best facilities in the country for whale watching, due to the proximity to the whales. And the same goes for the town Husavík as well, by the next bay to the east of us, or behind this peninsula, we call Flatair Sky, or the Flat Island Peninsula. So history is still in the making around here, but the Höganes village itself appears to have been formed in the late 19th century. But centuries before, the creek which forms a shelter from the ocean currents was a harbor for the farmers in the area, or a story that we can read all over Iceland, where towns emerged by the coastline where some shelter could be found. Fishing has been dominating throughout the history of Höganes, and in fact, the political and social decisions in regards to fisheries in Iceland in general reflect the uprising and downfall of the village culture and population. But uh, there I'm into the fishery quota system, and that's a story that I'm not going to dive into in this video. But a bit more of history, a nearby farmland holds the grave of the Norwegian king Hrærekur, 
most likely the only king buried in Iceland ever. But around the year 1000, there were many original kings in Norway, most of them relatives of Harald the Hairy, who had conquered and united Norway in one commonwealth hundred years earlier. But Olaf wanted to rule alone as a dictator. The smaller kings turned against him, so Olaf let his men capture these rebels, sent them in exile, or chopped off their hands, legs, or heads. And the leader of those rebel kings was Hrærekur. Olaf let his men pluck out his eyes, so he was blind after that. He didn't want to execute him, so he kept him in his palace under torture. A few years later, an Icelandic man, Thorarin Neviolsson, was staying with King Olaf when Olaf asked him to take Hrærekur with him and drop him off in Greenland. But the ship got bad weather and the king Hrærekur would end up in Iceland. After two winters in different locations, Hrærekur could not find happiness. So he was brought to a little and poor farm called the Kalfskin. Kalfskin. He liked it well and said, At Kalfskin I am respected as I deserve. And there he would die after his fourth winter in Iceland, the summer of the year 1022. And this noble king is buried close by the highway. For a long time, his grave was a monument of neglect. But it was, however, in 1976 that the local Lions Club placed this monument on his grave, which, however, cannot be properly accessed from the main road. And the people around here have fought for a long time for the king to receive more dignified surroundings around his grave. Also because uh, foreign tourists come here quite often, mostly from Norway. And uh, even me had a hard time finding the exact uh, location of the grave for this uh, video. So we Icelanders are still far from taking advantage of uh, all the opportunities that uh, can be found in tourism. Not to mention the respect for grave sites. But uh, there is pressure and... Uh, we will see a road soon. And uh, as for the Icelandic sagas around, this is the location of the early settlements in Eyjafjörður. This is where the settlement began, which uh, then continued south into the fjord, but there are not many signs of that around here, not even for Icelandic tourists. So it's here, like uh, elsewhere, there are things that we do well, and there are things that we could do better. But I'm going to end this trip on this uh, time lapse that runs uh, from around here to Akureyri, south along the beautiful Eyjavörður, which is a part of the route called uh, the Arctic Coastway, or a concept that's meant to draw attention to all that the north coast of Iceland has to offer. And uh, as usual, I'm mentioning that my channel is not a public representative of either towns or companies I'm mentioning here nor is the channel sponsored by them in any way, leaving me with the freedom to be my own editor, say what I feel, because uh, I don't want to sound like a tourist brochure, even though I sometimes do. First of all, it is about to give you inside information and how I perceive my country and share it, so you can either travel around Iceland with me on my channel or use my tips in order to get the most out of your own trip to my home country, Iceland.